Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to use VSTs in Reaper to, in this case, build an entire guitar rig. But of course, uh, you can use VSTs to add to, to complement any hardware effects, stomp boxes, multi effects pedals that you have uh, connected up to a PC when you're recording. Uh, I'm going to build a fairly straightforward uh, guitar rig from scratch in Reaper using VSTs. Uh, and this is really just trying to illustrate what I'm going to try and create. So we have a, we'll start with a basic guitar input fed into a track which will contain just a single uh, amp uh, model, VST, and that'll go uh, out of my sound card to the speakers. Um, then we'll add a couple more VSTs just to show how you can build, a, start to build a complex or more complex and more interesting tone and then we'll finish by using Reaper's clever routing to add a shimmer path so basically they're the three steps that we'll go through and then hopefully uh, we'll just quickly at the end show how through automation you can make the thing a bit more dynamic okay so that's what we're trying to create so if I start with an empty project then the first thing as ever uh, is a little bit of setting up to do. If you look at options and preferences in Reaper and make your way down to plugins VST, um, whenever you install a VST, whether it unpacks itself and installs itself or whether you just get a DLL file that you've got to find a home for, you've got to put it somewhere on your hard drive um, and you've got to tell v Reaper where to go look for the VSTs that it's going to offer up for you later. Uh, most VSTs will unpack themselves or install themselves into a path that is uh, in, on your C drive in program files in a subdirectory called Steinberg subdirectory VSTs. That tends to be a bit of a default location where most VSTs unplug themselves. Uh, but you can add as many of these uh, paths in Reaper as you want. Uh, I keep mine all in that Steinberg. Um, folder in my program files, Steinberg uh, being one of the developers, I think, or pioneers of this kind of technology linking di di digital signal processing to recording software, I get uh, special treatment. And most VSTs will unpack themselves or, or default to unpacking themselves in a Steinberg VST plugins directory. And indeed Reaper, that's one of the default places that Reaper will, will look if you don't touch that um, set of settings. Okay, once that's all set up, every time you start Reaper, what it will do is it will look through those various paths and um, uh, just make a record of any VST, VSTs that it finds and make them available as and when we need them. So, without further ado, having all that set up, what I'm going to do is try and create that sort of first basic um, rig. I'm going to do that with two tracks. Now you could do this with one track, but because we're going to add the second shimmer path, I'm just going to save a bit of time and do some basic routing to start with. So I've created two tracks. I'm going to call the first one input track. And really all this track will do is receive the guitar sound, the guitar signal from my sound card. What it'll then go on to do is redistribute it. Firstly to the second track, which is going to be our main tone. So I'm just going to call that main and then later it'll also redistribute it to the shimmer path. So just bear with that for now. Hopefully it'll all make sense in a little while. So what we need to do first of all is, as we've done before, give the input track an input. So I'm going to set that to be the stereo input that goes into my sound card from my GT8 which comes in on inputs 3 and 4, left and right. I need to arm that track and monitor it. And then we should have a very quiet tone. It's just a basic guitar. There's nothing really going on in the GT8. Approximate sending the signal into my sound card. Now, that track, every track you create in Reaper is automatically and by default routed to the master track. So here's my master track. I can turn the volume up and down of the whole um, cacophony of sounds that I'll create. What I want to do with this input track, because 
all I want it to do is distribute the sound is turn off its connection to the master track and the way to do that is hit this IO button here we bring up the routing for the input track um, now this first checkbox here determines whether or not that sound will be sent from this track to the master track and I want to turn that off so now my sounds disappeared again what I do want to do however is set up a routing um, a connection to my main signal track which is called which is this second track this main track and in amongst this routing stuff here we can do several things we can send the signal to um, other Reaper tracks which is what we want to do in a moment I could send it to audio outputs if I wanted to uh, hive off this part of the signal chain to, a, to an audio output on my sound card I could do that here or we can do stuff with MIDI which is for another day what I want to do for now is send this signal to another track so if I just click on new send the only other track available is the second one we set up the main track so if I click that what you see appear here on the input track is a, is a, a, a mark that notes um, that we've got a send set up. So on each track, there's a subdivider here. Anything above the line will be an input of F, uh, F effect. Anything below the line will be a routing or a send. So basically what's going off is, in this track, from inputs 3 and 4 on my sound card, it takes a signal, it processes it through any effects that are contained here, which we'll add in a moment to this track. It then uh, processes that um, through uh, these sliders here and faders and sends it either to any of these sends that are set up here, these routings that are set up here, or the master track, if indeed we still had that selected. So what we've got now is my guitar signal coming in on this path, uh, this track, and going to this track. To this track, above this line, I'm going to add my VST effects. So I'm going to start to build that um, signal path that we had in the diagram. I'm going to do that by adding an amplifier to start with, to give it a bit something we can hear. So if I click in any of these slots above the line, what I'll get is my uh, a VST um, dialog. And this is where all of the VSTs that Reaper found when it was booting up and searching through those directories that we set up appear for use. And there's hundreds of weird and wonderful things that Reaper comes with as a default that you can do um, to change the sound or visualize the sound or do all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff that you can explore at your leisure. What we're interested in is using one of the plugins that I've installed on my system which is a Guitaric 5 plugin. Uh, so I'm going to select that. Now Guitaric 5 is a, a phenomenally powerful piece of software in its own right. It's a, it's a, it's a software equivalent of a multi-effects pedal and we can build up all kinds of really complicated um, uh, rigs using this. Um, here's one that I use for for, uh, for the fly. Um, all kinds of stuff going on. For the purpose of this what we're going to do is just use a basic amp. So this is an attempt at uh, an SDD 3000 preamp and a, uh, a Vox AC 30 amp that I've uh, used in the past, developed with various people from the uh, YouTube uh, Guitar Tutorials forum and it gets a tone something like that. So we've got something marginally more interesting uh, with um, and that effectively is that first uh, uh, rig uh, figure one and the diagram we had at the beginning. To start adding a bit more interest to that we can just start now building um, uh, more complex signal paths I'm going to click on an empty slot underneath Guitar Rig uh, to add another VST. Now, I'm going to use Guitar Rig again. You would never normally Guitar Rig is very powerful. You can build up really complex rigs, and you'd never normally do it this way. But I'm just trying to illustrate a point that we can mix and match and build um, tones using different 
uh, plugins I just happen to be using the same one it's probably done this way a bigger processor overhead um, but it illustrates a point so I, what I'm going to do is just pick a very basic delay here so I've got a um, multi-tap delay uh, giving a dotted eights delay is set up to do and uh, well that in this case is synced to the BPM of the Reaper track so that was 120 BPM if I change that you can hear the dotted eights change so that's that's Reaper interacting with the VST uh, I synchronized my delay as opposed to having a um, it's set to a millisecond delay so uh, we're nearly there in terms of the second diagram what we want to do is just add a third VST uh, to be the drive now I'm going to add that in amplitude this time around because I like the drives in amplitude um, and again amplitude is a very complicated uh, all singing all dancing um, guitar rig um, multi effects soft piece of software for speed I'm going to simply add a simple preset which has all the amps turned off it has no post amp processing it's just got a simple stomp box for a distortion so I've now got a horrible sound but it does contain some distortion it's horrible because the routing is wrong so what we've got at the moment is the input track taking my signal from my guitar sending that into the track we've called main and it goes through these the signal goes through these VSTs in the sequence that they're listed here so it's going through the guitar amps it's going through then the delay which is fine but then it's going through the drive which is not normally the sequence that we would want to route these things so what I need to do now is just reroute it slightly by clicking and holding on amplitude and moving it up the list so now we're going through amplitude first the drive, we're going through the amps, and then we're going through the delay. So we've now got that second uh, figure with a drive and an amp and a delay. 